the really important message and lesson I want to get across from that last video is that your eyes can very easily deceive you. We had one example where it seemed like it should be clipping and we pulled down on the master fader and suddenly it wasn't clipping anymore and all the dynamics were brought back into the signal. And then we had another example where we just added 50 dB of gain to one side and took 50 away from the other and yet we ended up with pretty heavy distortion. And what I'm not saying is that this sound is necessarily bad. I actually think for this particular poem, if we added some additional filtering, maybe threw a little bit of reverb on there, had some EQ, it might be really cool to have this kind of effect. Right, for the actual content that's being delivered in the poem, that sounds kind of cool to me, but you always want to make sure that you are intentionally doing something. And I think it's very easy in the computer to look at this signal flow, right? We're looking at these two plugins here, and we're not seeing any red on any meters anywhere. Everything looks good. Everything looks safe, yet if we take these off and we listen to the sound, it's totally different. So you have to be careful. You can't let your eyes guide you. And there's a lot of like seasoned veteran mixing engineers who were making that transition from analog to digital. And one of the things they really loved about the digital is that the metering is so precise. Well, the metering can be really precise, but it doesn't always tell you the full story. So just be careful, make sure you're paying attention each and every stage you go along the way. And this is why working at safe levels is really important because it gets to a point where you know you're never gonna possibly be doing something unintentional, meaning getting that digital distortion unless it's something that you want. So having a clip gain that's in that nice, you know, minus 10 to minus five sort of dB region. And then when you are working with dynamics processors, being very careful about what's happening on the input and what's happening on the output, etc., etc., etc. And one plugin that we're going to be using in the next video is an additional dynamics processor that is called the Hofa 4U Meter. Okay, and this is completely up to you whether or not you want to use this. Um, it can be kind of a pain to install. There's like a lot of stages to it. But one of the reasons I like this is because it gives me a digital meter that is going to show me if I'm actually clipping, even if on my output fader, I'm not getting that kind of information. So for example here, I'm using the tool device. Um, and so we know that it's not maybe going to officially digitally clip as long as we're safe with our meters. But still, this is going to tell oh, us. Wow. But whenever you welcome the hour that awakens the night song of birth in your bower, so this number up here, this little 18.3, is actually telling me what value I would be clipping and going over by. Okay, so if, for example, I was driving this into an additional processor and it didn't give me a meter and it wasn't showing me the over, I could very easily be getting digital distortion and not really realizing it. So that's one of the main reasons I use this plugin is because it gives me the meter and it will also then give me a gain control so I can compensate if I have to. But really, this meter is here to show me what I have going in so that I can fix it farewell but whenever you welcome the hour and make sure that i'm safe um, where i'm at with my signal flow so i could drop this in at any point along the way and check on it and once i've made that check assuming i'm not doing anything with panning or changing the gain value here i can just get rid of it and delete it so it's there really as a safety valve you don't need it if you just use your ears you'll probably know and also a lot of plugins will have an indicator for when it's clipping but not all of them do so you do need to be aware of that the other thing i thought i'd mention is that on a lot of the dynamics processors in freeware plugin form, you will see that on those plugins, they actually have input and output controls. So you can see here, I have an input gain and an output gain. And so if I do want to drive into the processor hard, if I want to get some of that like analog saturation, if I want that characteristic, I will use the input and the output gain that is on the plugin first. I will not drive it in with an additional utility device unless I absolutely have to.
So there are some plugins that don't give you that input drive control, and yet they still have like a saturation characteristic, go figure. So in those situations, you do need to actually bring in a tool like we have down here and like drive into the processor. But otherwise, I'll just really crank up the input gain and then compensate with the output gain and make sure that I go in and out around the same level. So that's called like balancing your gains. And that's the really basics to gain staging. And at the end of this week, we will have a lengthy example showing you and talking about um, managing your gains if you had like a really complex effects chain, for example.